Hey guys, today we are doing kind of a roundup on the Long Island serial killers. I'm sure if you guys have been paying close attention to the news, you've noticed that the former disgraced police chief uh, was also caught yesterday breaking, um, being arrested for solicitation. But I also was digging and I found um, a little while ago, August the 11th, 2021, which, you know, is a little while ago, but the disgraced prosecutor who was kind of sentenced and helped James Burke, who, you know, was the disgraced chief, he was also convicted. So I kind of want to go into that now. Listen, I am not aware of owns true crime, you know, investigative skills. So we might found out find out that they are not the most accurate, but hopefully they do great investigative reporting. But I thought that, you know, this would give us another look at what is going on and give us a more well-rounded information thing. And we will go then directly into what our disgraced police chief who may or may not have beaten down a man who tried to lift a dildo out of his car, um, as one does. Um, don't you know you're supposed to put those in your nightstand as any good Christian person is supposed to? You know, never mind. Jokes aside, it is early in the morning and I don't have my face on. And as any good Christian woman and or man and or Smith Mar knows, uh, we don't have a face before we put on makeup. Uh, as any good lizard person knows, I can't show you my real face without makeup, so... That's why I have my avatar up. The disgraced former New York prosecutor who helped cover up the jailhouse beating of a man who stole items, including a duffel bag containing sex toys, from a local police chief whose name was dragged into the unsolved Long Island serial killer case was sentenced to five years in prison this week. Thomas Zapata, 79, and his top aide, 55-year-old Christopher McPartland, were handed their sentence on Tuesday by a federal judge following their December 2019 convictions on conspiracy, obstruction of justice, witness tampering, and several civil rights violation charges related to a vast cover-up of the beating of a suspected thief by Suffolk County Police Chief James Burke in 2012. So if you go back in time, you know that a lot of these bodies were starting to be found, I believe, and I have to go look at my notes, and it is uh, 6.55 in the morning, and I don't have my notebook right next to me. Now, I am also lazy and not willing to get up and go get my notebook. So I believe they started finding bodies in 2010, 2011. So um, it is widely known that apart from it being somewhat implied that the bodies being possibly part of the less than dead uh, group of women who were linked to Craigslist workers or um, sex workers, possibly the police weren't putting their full efforts in, but there are implications that because this police chief was under federal um, scrutiny. He also wanted them to slow walk the Long Island serial killer uh, case and did not accept any federal assistance because he was, again, under this additional scrutiny. Now, these two things can be true at the same time. So there could have been much more of a stigma at that time, and there could have also been the fact that the police chief was unwilling to take federal help, um, compounding to both problems being an issue. Zapata was also ordered to pay a $100,000 fine. Quote, that this is not a monetary, a momentary moral lapse, but years of criminal cover up. End quote. U.S. District Judge Joan Arasnik. Arasrek? Y'all, I need 
I need an emotional support last name divisor. Said at sentencing on Tuesday, Zapata told Arez Azrak that his prosecution was at the lowest point in his life, and he believes this it will be his les- legacy after a long career as a respected prosecutor. The septuagenarian, gosh, I love that word. I need to use it more often. In fact, I need to lead. I need to live until I'm I'm seventy just to use it. I'm going to get a T-shirt that says "Hot A Septuagenarian." Just everywhere said he hopes to not, quote, die in prison alone, end quote. Prosecutors have made a case for both men to spend eight years behind bars, telling the court that in covering up a top police officer's crime, they were doing the, quote, exact opposite of their job. I wonder, yeah, okay, of their jobs. In 2022, or 2012, Long Island resident, Christopher Loeb had been arrested after being accused of breaking into Burke's department-issued SUV and stealing his belt gun, ammunition, and a duffel bag, which contained, wait for it, cigars, sex toys, a prescription of Viagra, and pornography. So the Bill Clinton special, if you will. All he needed was a blue dress and some stain remover. Just note. For note to self, everyone, have a Tide pen available at all times. God. You can't make this crap up. Also, sir, why would you have that in your department-issued SUV? Like, wouldn't you keep that in your own? I Look, I'm going to guess this man drives. Okay. Going to say a... Okay, I'm going to say a Ford Focus, but that's because that's the most embarrassing car I, car I could say. Um, but okay. After learning of Loeb's apprehension, federal authorities say Burke's, Burke rushed to the police station where he found Loeb, quote, handcuffed, hunched over, and manacled to the floor and began beating him. As you do, I mean, look, you guys, I am not saying that if if someone found my duffel bag full of, again, I'm just saying that as a good moral person and normal-ish, always add that ish there because, look, we're not liars, but I'm going to keep my cigar sex toys and prescription of Viagra, as I do, in my nightstand and or gun safe like a normal human. And if I'm transporting those things, I'm going to keep them out of my government-issued car like a normal person. Because, look, I don't want my neighbors and or, you know, subordinates to know what I'm into. I mean, I'm sure Cletus would be super okay with whatever I'm into. But, you know, Hank Hill over there is all, you know, straight-laced. And he'd be super weirded out about whatever, you know, I'm into. Helen Lovejoy would over gasp and just, you know, pass out. And I don't want to have to get the AED out. You know, we, we just had, we done just had, you know, an, an in-service about it, but you know, someone would screw it up and then I'd have to do paperwork and have to have to recertify everyone. And someone would end up passing out and it's a whole bunch of paperwork. Again, beating some officer, abuse is bad but for the love of cheetos seriously the chief quote shook Loeb's head violently punched him in the head and body and attempted to knee Loeb, according to court documents he then ordered that multiple high-ranking commanders in the suffolk county police department ensure quote officers who had witnessed the assault never reveal what they had observed end quote Zapata was recruited into the conspiracy at this point, along with McPartland, who was then the chief of investigators of an of the Anti-Corruption Bureau. The government investigated itself and found itself completely innocent. And we were all very reassured. 
at the trial or at trial, an officer testified for the government about the 2000 meeting at Zapata's office, where he explained that as federal investigators began probing Loeb's beating for a second time, Zapata asked him to find out if there if anyone who was aware of the attack had flipped. Someone's talking. You better find out fast. If it's not too late, Zapata said, the officer testified. Burke, a longtime protege of Zapata, was sentenced to 46 months in federal prison after pleading guilty to depriving a person of civil rights and conspiracy to commit obstruction of justice. Amid this cover-up, Burke became connected to the ongoing Long Island serial killer case, which involves the murders of at least 10 people, mostly female Craigslist workers, who have been found dead on Long Island over a 20-year period. This includes the so-called Gilgo Four young women whose bodies were found in late 2010. Okay, so this is contemporaneous to about the time that they did start finding the bodies. And I do believe this, um, we do need to have that watch through uh, Lost Girls. Uh, we did read that article and go over on my channel the um, author's reaction, uh, the author of the book Lost Girls, and it was also turned into a Netflix documentary, Lost Girls, about the Lisk murders. And he does talk about how, again, it was kind of a two-prong where he does really lean into the negative reactions that he feels like the police had towards the lifestyle that these women had. And unfortunately, in reality, it is a, a high risk lifestyle. And I am all for the fact that these are these women were mothers, sisters, daughters first. I don't care what their lifestyle was. Um but I also do see the very real connection that if Burke was also then facing deep scrutiny from the feds uh, and then refused federal aid, it would stymie this report or this um, investigation. And if he slow walked this, then I am not shocked that there was a lot of issues with this case beyond even what we know about. Okay, within a quarter mile of each other near Gilgo Beach on Long Island's South Shore, just after Burke began his sentence in December 2016, a 30-year-old woman identified as Leanne came forward at a news conference where she claimed Burke had paid her for Smexy times during a house party in the same area where victim Shannon Gilbert had disappeared. She said she'd seen Burke at a at a Mexican nose clams fueled party in Oak Beach in June 2011, where she observed Burke pull a woman by her hair to the ground, according to New York Post. Now. I'm not saying that this didn't happen, but again, it's like all these people who come out of the woodwork as soon as someone becomes famous or something happens, you know, like I done nude him in third grade. And, uh, well, you know, I'm just saying. Photos or it didn't happen, ma'am. And y'all know she done had a cell phone at that time. An attorney representing the family of Gilbert, whose body was found in 2011, said the news conference, this was the first time Burke had been connected to the area and prostitution. Burke's attorney, Joseph Conway, responded by saying, quote, allegations that James Burke had any involvement in the Gilgo Beach murders is completely outrageous. You know, now that we have, you know, Rex Hurman in custody, it does seem a bit odd that a lot of local police, look, if the chief is involved in this, I and his he's got people under him that are willing to lie and say he wasn't involved in, you know, beating a guy over, I'm going to go ahead and say a dildo, 
and the Bill Clinton special and his duffel bag. I, I'm gonna, it's not a far leap for me in my whole Dale Gribbleness and Captain Tinfoil Hatness to go ahead and, and, and assume mightily, allegedly, that the cops knew where to find women of ill repute that were willing to trade some nose clams for some services, if you will, and uh, maybe go a party in. So, and Rex Sherman is not a man you would lose in a crowd because he's only like seven feet tall and looks remarkably like Shrek. But okay, sure, sir. As chief of the SCPD, Burke had been involved in the Gilgo Beach investigations and, in fact, had fired Suffolk County Police or County Chief of Detectives Dominic Verone in late 2011, just two days after Gilbert's body was found. Verone told New York Station PIX11 in 2019 that he believed this hindered the investigation called his sacking quote, a bit of a dropping of the baton. Nevertheless, Verone said he does not believe that Burke should be considered a suspect in the Lisk murders. I don't think a killer would reside in Oak Beach and dispose of the body so close, Verone said. This is a dumping area. So, I mean, it does kind of beg the question that, you know, hey, interesting, so now we go to um, Mr. Burke, who just can't seem to keep himself out of trouble, like the old Waterfalls song. Let's see. Oh, him's having just himself having a bad day. You know, it's always them women's that will get you. Let's see what happened to old Mr. Burke. You know, it's always them women's that'll get you. Uh, former Suffolk Police Chief James Burke charged with offering a sex act in, pub in public lewdness. Well, I mean, if he's offering a sex act, I mean, maybe he's being Christian. Like, I saw you were having a bad day. Um, You know, here's a sex act for you. It's like a Christian, like, it's going to offer you a hug. <laughs> Hugs, no drugs. Let's see what this man has to say. James Burke is facing numerous charges after park rangers arrested him as part of a sting operation. And he's 12 or not in not in a national park, sir. Why? Smokey the bear, only you can stop forest ejaculation. Oh, Lord. Okay. A ponton at Veterans Memorial Park at Bald Hill with the breakdown. <clears throat> Not Bald Hill. Jiminy Christmas. Not Bald Hill. <laughs> Police commissioner says just about everything unfolded here at Vets Park on Bald Hill earlier this morning. Rodney Harrison says James Burke was arrested here. And not a blue dress, y'all. I can't. 2023, you have redeemed yourself. America and my humor. You know, this last week hasn't been great, but, you know, it, my sense of humor wins. Here After a sting operation. Now, the Suffolk County Police Commissioner says that James Burke was arrested not a few hours before walking out of Suffolk County 6 Precinct in Selden around 5 this afternoon. That was just after he'd been arrested around 10.15 this morning and charged with offering a sex act public lewdness, indecent exposure, and criminal solicitation. Now, Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison says park rangers in plain clothes were in the park around 10 this morning because of recent complaints about activity in the park. And within just a few minutes of being in the park, rangers... Oh, please tell me it was a George Michaels thing. Not that I'm upset at George Michaels for anything, up except that, look, when I was about 12, Faith came out and... um Look, I didn't realize that George Michaels would never, ever, in my budding 12-year-old, um, noticing boys for the first time that, okay, noticing that boys could eventually become attractive and not gross, not, but had the potential for non-grossness eventually. And then I got married to Mr. Moe and I realized they, at, you know, late 40s would still be very impressed at their farts but i digress faith came out 
and you know it was super smexy and you know then came him getting in trouble in an la sort of bathroom sting please let it be an la bathroom sting but yeah realizing george michaels would probably never be attracted to me um well that was a little upsetting for a 12 year old mo who who eventually wanted to marry george michaels so there you go you're saying an individual was soliciting for sexual engagement. Now, police wouldn't give details about the operation or how they made the arrest, but they did say that the Rangers who encountered Burke did not know who the former chief was. Not until he identified himself and said who he was, do you know who I am? He was expressing to us how um, this would um, you know, be a public humiliation for him and such. And we learned just a little while ago from the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office that James Burke is set to be arraigned on those charges in Central Islip in a couple of weeks on September 11th. Commissioner Harrison's. Oh, could you pick a different day? I mean, I know, like, I, I get that things have to happen on that day now, but come on, y'all. This poor woman has to get about four in the crack of dawn you know, in her nice blue dress, who she has no idea that, you know, person like me is going to make fun of it for the obvious Bill Clinton joke, which I'm sorry, ma'am, it looks beautiful on you. You are slaying it and you do your awesome job. I am just a moron on the internet. You're awesome. Thelma, you are awesome. Then says he could be facing more charges. And a little more now. Burke was Suffolk Police. Holy Chief. God, this man has has eyes like mine. This man has not seen a good night of sleep in the last. <laughs> this man is the, the old lady at the Titanic. It's been 84 years. We we have not had a good, a good night's sleep in 84 damn years. OK, we will get to the actual story now. Former Suffolk County Police James Burke was arrested Monday for soliciting someone for sex at Farmingville Park, officials say. Oh, please come up with some idea. Please, please, dear God, come up with a story that he was playing Pokemon Go. I want him to say, no, I was trying to find a Charizard. I was trying to find, oh gosh, a Bulbasaur. And what had happened was it was, it was dark and I had bumped into a lady of ill repute and and she had also, I was geocaching at the same time, and she said she had found something. <laughs> Sir, go full on farce. When in doubt, go full ridiculous. You're not going to get out of it, but at least I'll have fun for my amusement, if nothing else. <laughs> Sir, when in doubt, go full on farce for Mo's amusement. Because, uh, listen, really, it's all you've got right now. And... If all else fails, you can come onto my channel for, for an interview. But let's see what this this gentleman has to say about it because I'm sure he uh the Lord. I'm here with Steve Layton, as well as uh, some of the men from the Suffolk County Parks Police. Uh, due to numerous complaints about our activity over at Vietnam Memorial in Farmingville, members assigned to the Suffolk County Park Rangers targeted response unit conducted an operation utilizing plainclothes rangers. At 10.15 a.m. today, during this operation, they engaged one individual who was soliciting for sexual engagement. Due to the actions that I am not going to share, this individual was placed under arrest. The rangers ascertained that our perpetrator involved was identified as James Burke, former chief of the Suffolk County Police Department. He was transported to the 6th Precinct by Park Rangers for processing. He's being charged with offering a sex act, indecent exposure, public lewdness, and criminal solicitation, fifth degree. Additional charges may be pending. And we are still currently trying to ascertain if he's still on federal probation. I open up the floor for any questions at this time. Wait, I do have a question. So is this like, um, I'll raise my hand and he says, yes, ma'am. Is this like when uh, uh, the famous lawyer from Sweden, Nicholas Sto uh, Staro, says that 
any woman can stop any uh, argument by just doing one simple move. Did he simply think that that would uh, happen in reverse and effed around and found out? Apparently, there is no reciprocal male uh, male move that can stop all arguments in their tracks. But let's hear the actual question. <laughs> it was just male, male uh, plainclothes officers at the uh, during the operation. Oh, it's a male officer. He was. It was full George Michael. It was George Michael. And you know we are here for it. Yeah, we, there is no shame, man, woman, Smizmar. We're here for it. When you say numerous complaints about the activity, can you expand on that a little bit further? Sure, I'll, I'll have. Uh... Uh, Steve, Steve, Steve Layton talk about the uh, complaints that we received over there. Steve? We, we have our targeted response unit within the Rangers that uh, we get the problematic areas. Wait a minute. They have a they have a gay. I'm sorry. A. A hookup. And interestingly, just a hookup task force in the park ranger. It's like my job counselor in high school never told me about these interesting jobs that would have gotten me outdoor and, and you know, exercise. Because I'd have been there like weird, kinky hookup patrol officer. Where was this in my career pamphlets when I was taking my aptitude tests? Because I always got mortician. And if you hear my children in the background, um, uh, it is uh, yet again uh, Screw Parents Wednesday in the majority of my kids' school. That the school system, my majority of the kids go to. So every Wednesday they have a two-hour delay because reasons no idea anywho so they are being loud and i forgot to shut the door but uh yeah had i known that park rangers do that i would have maybe have become a park ranger i'm just saying park rangers if you want to increase like you know recruitment maybe put that in your pamphlet because there's i'm just I'm not the only weirdo that would go for that kind of job. The county park system, uh, graffiti, vandalism, quality of life issues, uh, theft, and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is one of those areas that we've received numerous complaints about quality of life issues up there. So we're attempting to uh, do our best to curtail that. And were there complaints of people soliciting, soliciting sex? Or? That's correct, yeah. How long had the police officer been out there before the arrest took place? Uh, they were only out there a few minutes, to be honest with you. They, they had just arrived at the location. Did, did, did your guys recognize him? And what was their, did you describe the reaction that seeing him? The ranger who uh, made the arrest, uh, Mr. Burke, did not know who he was. I mean, did the, did the ranger know who Mr. Burke was? No, not at first, not until he identified himself and said who he was. Do you know who I am? So he said that to the ranger? At yes. Some point? Yeah. Was he attempting to get out of being arrested? Uh, yeah. Yes, he was. Could you describe that? To um, well, he was expressing to us how um, this would, um, you know, be a public humiliation for him and such. So. How did the arrest come to be? Did he proposition the plain officer? Did the officer see something? What prompted the arrest? Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of that. Uh, Mr. Burke is still being processed by the detectives inside. Was anyone else arrested? The person that was due, due to uh, it happening so fast, as soon as the uh, plainclothes rangers got there this morning, that was the only apprehension they had made this morning at the memorial.
<laughs> oh my gosh can you imagine like they just they they hadn't even put the little you know Khalees on the boom box my milkshake brings all the they hadn't even gone to like my milk and and you know police former police chief burke is like hello notice my entire outfit is made of velour like full captain brannigan are you gonna go back We've been there several times. <laughs> We're going to take one more question. We've heard a lot of rumors going on around this case that there may have been drugs uh, taken from uh, the, the former chief, uh, that there was uh, maybe a minor involved. Can you, can you address some of those? Yeah, so we're not going to talk about the little details that are circulating regarding rumors and what was uh, he carrying and what was in his possession. Uh, I shared the charges with you regarding what he's being charged with. Uh, if you have... Any further questions, we could have our PIO get in contact with you, but that's where we stand at this time regarding the charges to uh, to Jim Burke. And you, you said you reached out to the federal agencies to see if he's still under parole? We did. We haven't heard back. We're, we're waiting for a response from them. I know this all predates your time here, but do you have any reaction to... I do not. I do not. No comment at this time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Oh my. So this is uh, hilarious. So let's see. According to officials, Suffolk Par County Park Rangers were in plain clothes at the time because of recent complaints about activity in the area. Officials say park rangers who encountered Burke did not know who the former police chief was until he identified himself. Oh my God, he went full Karen and Ken on him. Both, well, probably Ken. Uh, Suffolk County Park Ranger uh, Sergeant Brian Quatrini says it appeared as if Burke was attempting to avoid arrest. He expressed how this would be a public humiliation for him as such. Well, you know, I mean, Burke was has been ar charged with offering a public, well, a sex act, public lewdness, indecent exposure, criminal solicitation, and potential or additional potential charges pending. He was allowed to walk out of Suffolk County's 6th Precinct in uh, Slayton around 5 p.m. Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison says Burke may be charged with more crimes. He is due to be arraigned in court on those charges on September 11th. Burke was in Suffolk County's police was Suffolk County's police chief from 2012 to 2015. He later pleaded guilty to federal charges for beating a handcuffed man suspected of stealing pornographic material, sex toys, and other items from his uh, duty patrol vehicle uh, while he was handcuffed. It's just. Good night, nurse. It's just insane. I I don't understand this. He was sentenced to 46 months in prison, prison for that offense. Former Suffolk County District Attorney, Attorney Thomas Zapata and one of Zapata's aides were also convicted of helping Burke uh, cover up that incident. And we just covered those in the article I previously read. So, um... You know, some people just don't have do right in them. And I guess this guy just don't have do right in them. So, uh, you know, I may or may not cover this particular arraignment because, or because, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. I mean, not for the victims, but this man just seems to not be able to, you know, fly right no matter what. But I'm going to let you guys go because my children seem to be unable to to be quiet. And I hope you have a great day. And remember, you might not be everyone's cup of tea, but we are a whole family of weird here. And we welcome you. And we will give everyone a try. Have a great day. And I will see you guys later. Do all the youtube -y things. Like, subscribe, share if you would be so kind. Uh, invite all your friends here. Enemies, frenemies and you know relatives you haven't seen in years see